every parent has had those tense standoffs at the dinner table, trying to persuade their kids to eat their veggies. It can get quite stressful and it's hard to know just how, how tough we need to be with our picky eaters. Joining us in the coffee group today, John Cowan from The Parenting Place and naturopath Renee Leonard Stainton. Renee, now you've got two littlies. I do. Do you have any tricks for getting the veggies into them? I do. I have to say, though, being a nutritionist does not exempt me from having fussy <laughs> eaters. You know, they still kick up a fuss with certain things. So um, I find when it's, they're going through a particularly fussy period, smoothies all the way in terms of, you know, throwing in my little one. Yeah. He's three. We make green monster smoothies and throw in leaves, you know, spinach and and kale and the like and it really helps them get involved in the whole okay. idea of veggies actually tasting good because you're throwing in bananas and berries and all the delicious exactly. things. You're masking the flavour. Um, zucchini actually is really really good in, um, in smoothies because they can't taste it and it just gets a bit of veggie in there. Yeah and it, it's, it's a really good one. The other thing is grating zucchini yeah. into fritters and um, patties into pasta sauces right. or any veggies for that matter is a really good way as well. Of, of just getting them, because you do feel like quite a virtuous parent when you do get vegetables into your children, don't you? I like, know. Yes, they ate something green today. Yeah. John, I mean, how stressed should we be about this? I mean, if our children aren't eating all the veggies, should we really be concerned? Yeah, I think you should get stressed if they're starting to sign, show signs of scurvy. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> if, you, if you're trying different uh, foods and asking them to try just one spoonful, mm -hmm and exposing them over a period of time to just tastes like that. They won't like it at the start, but they grow into it. And so just say one teaspoonful mm. and, uh, and don't make a big fuss about it. That's much. really important is just like getting them to try things. If mm. they won't even try them, that's a bad, a bad start, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Another thing which really encourages them to try a variety of things is getting involved in the preparation of the food themselves mm. and also to make meal times a bit more of an event ritualize it, make it a bit more formal, and your example, eating together, talking together, it makes mealtimes a lot more fun, and uh, they, research shows that kids eat better which when they eat sitting around a table eating together. Which is great, but as yeah. uh, sometimes busy working families, it can be a hard thing to really do. Yeah, to, a couple to do of times night. a week. A couple of times a week. Mm. What about kids' tastes changing? They change as they get older, don't they? So should we just sit back and know that one day they'll eat their vegetables? Well, I think, yeah, they definitely do change. I mean, I've seen um, friends' kids go from eating sort of three, so, you know, jam bread, apples, and one other thing, mm. and then now she's eating raw fish and salad, so they definitely do change but I think it comes down to patience and just keep offering them that food like you say just one teaspoon here or one piece of this and mm. eventually they do come right I mean I see my three-year-old and he now eats a lot wider variety of vegetables than he did but it took a lot of work. Don't you think like a great parent when they're eating something green? When you go out to dinner and they actually choose the broccoli, you're I know. Like, oh, yes. <laughs> what about if they're eating they're not eating the vegetables but they're eating the fruits is that a problem? I mean, look, fruit's great, obviously. If you can get a combination, even better. But, again, it's celebrating the successes. So if they only eat two vegetables, just keep giving them those and ask them to try one, even just a mouthful mm -hmm. here and there. Um, but, yeah, trying to get the combo is, is the idea. Now, John, tell me about your... We were just talking off-camera before about your amnesty, which I think is a great idea. It worked brilliantly in our family. Uh, at a family meeting, each child was allowed to pick five foods they didn't have to eat. Mm -hmm. The deal was they had to eat everything else. And so if it was ever served up, and they said, it's on my amnesty list, so, which was <laughs> on the fridge, and uh, they could decline it with dignity, no fuss. The thing is, there is a lot more than five foods. And sometimes they say, oh, can I put this on my amnesty list? And you go, sure, at the next family meeting. But at the moment, you have to eat it. See, that's a great idea, too, because mm. also we have to remember that as adults, we don't like certain mm. foods. I'm not a massive fan of Brussels sprouts, so my children aren't going to like everything necessarily. And uh, just finally, very quickly, Renee, supplements. Do children ever need to take them or not? There are times that they do need to. I think it's a matter of looking at what they're eating on the, on the whole for a week. So not going judging by every okay. meal or every day, yeah. but seeing that they're getting a variety through the week. And then if you find they're not, you're, they're, you're really struggling to get the vegetables into them. Then um, you check it out. Check it out. There are some great, really easy, affordable options out there. And if you are concerned, though, that they have a deficiency, obviously speak to Take a health the health professional. Doctor. Great. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much, guys. Really, really pleasure always to have you in.